Hello everyone and welcome to the third episode of my team. Last time out in Spain we finished ninth for claiming team's first points. But you all know what race is next, and that's Monica. I'd imagine it's going to be a very long and painful race weekend. But before we get into it, I just need to let everyone know that with my birthday being on Monday, the next episode will be uploaded then instead of Sunday. Right enough, I think that's everything. Hope you enjoy it. And let's get straight into it. Well then for our activity this week, we choose a second driver performance review for one day and the sponsor advertisement for four days, I think we choose and then the marketing strategy conference for the other two days So then sadly the upgrade doesn't come through, but the general rare does but you know, it's less important general rares I think the other one does come through though, does it? We're in a yep. position now where we're able to attract a new sponsor to the team Head on over to the corporate tab and select the sponsor screen to choose who we should approach. Before we do that though, we're going to redo the failed rear float and truck grade which should be here for backer. There we are, sponsor choice. After looking through all of them, I think we do choose Zaynetto, I think we do. 144k gold bonus, 112k weekly bonus um, income. And the objective for them is to answer at least two interview questions during the race weekend. So, you know, it's quite easy to show out to. You see now we apply that to the car and that's the finished one. But now it's time for the interview. Thanks so much for the invitation to your HQ. Let's have a little chat about the team's performance this season. Upgrades to your facilities seem to have stalled. Is there no more room for improvement, or are you prioritising other areas? I think you've got it wrong there. All grades always coming through to make sure we don't fall down the grid. Your second driver seems to be getting much more comfortable with their car. Have you been focusing on their development? They've really been putting the hours in the simulator recently. Would it be safe to say that, in terms of team orders, your career comes first in your team? No, definitely not. There's no team orders around here. Your team's been picking up points fairly consistently. Do you think you'll be able to become a challenge to the top teams in the future? I mean, that's our aim, but it's going to take time to get there. You can't spill championship winning car overnight. What are your predictions for your team going into this season? We're still finding our face around here, but we hope we take some points here and there. Well, thanks a lot for inviting us here. It's been fantastic. Now, I finally got the interview out of the way. Let's get to the race weekend. So then post practice we get 340 more races points of Robert, takes us to 968, nearly enough for a um, major upgrade. Development boost wise we get around, I think it was 6 or 7 we go. Not much at the moment but when we start boosting these more they'll be a lot cheaper. Like that, that's like 28% 20, off now, it's quite a bit to fair. Claim wise, we do reach level 3 with Robert nearly at level 6 and Team and Claim also near level 6. Hopefully, get us to level 6 by the race, but now it's time for qualifying. Right then, here we are, qualified in Monaco. Turn one, you just, just use a lot of the curb through there, which is what we do. As you can see at the bottom right of the screen as well, the gearbox and the engine wear is getting worse as we touch the wall there. No damage there. So in the next one, next race or the race after, we might have to replace the gearbox, which would be early in six races, meaning we'll have to take a penalty. I don't want to do that, but our durability isn't good enough to last full six races. So we are going to have to swap there at some point. As you can show in there, the OIC and everything's going. But it's, it's been all right up so far. It ca I can be a lot faster, so I'm, I think I'm breaking a bit too early for the corners. Um, especially shown here, I do break a lot. You can carry a lot more speed around there. Even here as well. I know I still went over the curb, but you can still 
take a lot more speed through there through the final column there yeah, we, did, we did get a tiny bit of damage there and that is last so far our second lap though by a second well, a second and a half there mate though but this is still not enough and as you'll see now we are starting from last with Robert starting from P19 which I mean I'm, I'm not the strongest at Monaco but I hope to be a bit higher than that really but yep racing Q1 good day today let's have your take on it it's the start of the season how do you think things are going to go for you you can never tell us early into the season really so we'll have to see in a few races time you lost your teammate today was it just not your day I handled the chassis beautifully I think I need to learn to hurt myself if I'm being honest how will not making Q3 affect your strategy tomorrow? I mean, the car's not great on track anyway, and we're not meant to be in Q3 really yet, but I'll be aiming for some points. Appreciate your time. So after qualifying, Mick actually gains one point back, back from us on the rivalry, which takes it to 7-5. Acclaim-wise, we do edge close to the Acclaim level 6, Hopefully we can do after the race, but before we get into that race, I just wanted to say that we did change three parts of the power unit prior to this, but now it's time for the race. Formula One returns to Monte Carlo once again today, home to the world famous Monte Carlo Casino, first opened in 1863. And of course, a certain road race first held here in 1929. There's no greater an occasion, no more valuable a win than the Monaco Grand Prix. The astonishing Circuit de Monaco is, for all intents and purposes, virtually unchanged since its inaugural race back in 1929. The faster cars of today, though, ensure the 19 corners past the casino and along the seafront remain as thrilling as ever. A one mile lap here takes us around an entire country, yet never more than inches from the race ending barriers. Off the back of a fantastic qualifying session, it's time to see how our starting grid looks for today's race. Good job yesterday from Valtteri Bottas, the Finn starts from pole position. Edging out Max Verstappen, he'll start from P2. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Perez, Leclerc, Carlos Sainz, and Norris, Ricardo, Vettel, Stroll, and Pierre Gasly, Hamilton, Sonoda, Fernando Alonso and Ocon, Raikkonen, Latifi, George Russell and Antonio Giovinazzi, Schwartzman, Mick Schumacher, Mazepin and the captain. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. Here we are then, it's Monaco, it's the race and lights out and away we go. Great start for us to be there. We're already past Mazepin. And we get Schumacher and Russell on the first corner. Yep. Up into P19 already. We, do, we don't use ARS yet. We're going to save that until later on because these cars are supposedly slower than us on the performance index. As we just touched over Nazi's back wheel there, you saw the smoke. Well, we go down quite a, well, I say quite a few loads of cars there, was into P15, and again, going past Hamilton there, sort of squeezy mate, but that's P12 now, from last, so we've, we've already gained 10 positions in, well, half of that really, I'll take that, but Hamilton does try and come back with us now, because he's in a lot faster car, but we do keep position for now, carry some nice speed through there, and we need to do here, to do so here as well. And we do sort of. 
he just came back but by the end of that one we are still in front of Hamilton but of course last mistake there he is gaining as you can see on the left less than a tenth behind let's look at the replay camera now you'll see just how close he was ok we, we did touch as well but he does stay forward he doesn't spin luckily but by the end of lap 3 we are still ahead that's, that's, that's the good thing about Monaco you can overtake when everyone's together but it's hard as you edge run the race you can't really overtake you see end of lap 4 we're, we're still ahead we actually, we actually um, gained a bit took a bit off him So I had to say at the end of, uh, the end of lap 5 but Russell's out let's see what this is look I think that might be a gearbox issue there that's what the smoke is so he tries to pull in that's contact there though. that might have been that was Mazepin that lost his front wing there from the DNF of Russell that's unlucky as everyone else pits now though we come out is that 7th or 8th? that's 8th because Stappen just gets ahead of us but honestly so far so good from last but you can see at this point you realise we have actually got a lot of fuel left so we're doing start doing some fuel saving measures which isn't easy on the new game we do get some pass some more on the pits but Ocon does try and squeeze past us but we do have a superior line End lap 8, start lap 9, we're, we're, we're still 5th ahead of Ocon, he's, he's just trying to get past us though again but he's just getting closer and closer you can see here though just how uh, early on in the brakes try and gain some fuel that Alonso is gaining absolutely loads of us because that's what we're having to do to save fuel End lap 9, start lap 10 though, there's about half, half, sec half second the gap increasing a bit here and there but then decreasing towards the end end of lap 10 he is getting closer to the RS he might get past us here though yep, if we just stick a car in the middle of the road though we should be able to keep position he's ready to get around the inside outside even I don't know what you call it wheel to wheel now can we squeeze past him here We do. Oh, the car slides so sort of pushes me out wide by accident. That was not on purpose by the way, the car did slide. You can just tell we have literally no grip left now. Still, but we have P5 though, end lap 11, start lap 12. Still, still in front of Alonso. And we've got Arcon behind as well, the two Alpines. Wheel to wheel. Luckily we, we kept position there and luckily we didn't get damaged there as well. This is really hard though with the fuel save measures and put in place, breaking early to that corner. But we are pissing slap and as you can tell the tyres are just going there, you saw before we are sliding all over the place. Honestly, I find it strange though, we were last and so now we're fifth. And these aren't pretty TV here, I don't think so. As you know what, I think they might have to be fair. I don't know what the tyres are on probably softer so yeah soft so we're in the top 10 so they're already pitted but we are still P5 that is a terrible call in there by me we do keep positioning that's a slide though as well use all our rear here to get past we might just have to break over no we don't we give Alonso space what has what's gone on there? That, that that's that's massive. That is, oh my god. So we give him space, and he just clips the inside barrier, and there's a massive pile of cars. Just look at look at this from the view of the McLaren. I think that's Norris. Just yeah, everyone's lost the front wings, including Robert. So that does mean get a safe car. Roykin's out. Robert's out. Stroll's out. Gasly's out. This is mad. Yeah, safety car needs to be out to be fair. Hamilton's been disqualified. What's this turned into? Because that was not my fault. I gave him space and he just turned and clipped to the barrier of his back left. That was a good stop because he's been changing the front wing as well. 
You see Alonso's got a five second penalty for that as well. But we do come out ninth when the safety car's here. And with the safety car we get to save fuel as well. So it's just great. But the safety car is coming in now, a couple laps later. End of lap 16. So our aim is to hopefully get past the two Alpines. Because of course when they're all bunched together they are slower. So we can probably dive down the inside on one of the corners. Mainly good exit though, and then good restart. Which we sort of get, is this average? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's nothing special. Like they're better than us there. Hopefully we can just get a slipstream there, and sort of just claw our way back up. Let's see what we can do. We'll stay on board for this lap. So far so good, we, we keep we maintain distance really. Maybe gain a bit while they're fighting for the position. Yeah, we are, we are close now. Maybe dive down yet? We do indeed. Ah, that's Conto for Alonso there. His race just goes from bad to worse. Luckily, no damage for us, though, so that's fine. We do, we do keep going there. We'll see whether he does have damage or not, see whether he pits next lap. But this is so good, so far, so good. Three more laps to go. We should be up to stay seventh because you got Alonso for a second penalty as well. And it's going to be hard to get past for Ocon as well. So I'll, I'll say the best, maybe eighth, but I'll, I'll say seventh. It's a bad last corner, but Alonso does pit, so he did get damage from our contact. So I came off the best from that. <coughs> But we do remain 7th going into the end of lap 18, start of lap 19. And DRS does get enabled now with Ocon only 3 tenths behind. So Alonso going to the pits has released Ocon as you can see now. And he's absolutely flying. But we do keep him behind. Why did he try and go there Ocon? So we do, we do hit there but that was his fault. He, just <laughs> he tried to cut across the line. But here we go, final lap, we'll stay on board for whole lap as well. We did stay ahead of Ocon, he's closing the gap now actually, if you look on the left. Just over a tenth. But of course it, it's enough rain on the go. You can only really overtake certain places. Just <laughs> look at the bottom left though, of how many people are DNF from the crash. Absolutely loads. And then of course <laughs> Robert finishes ahead of the head of them all top of the DNFs. We do see him gain time and knock on as well, so I think we are going to be able to remain in seventh position. And if we do, you know what that means? Two points finish in a row. I shall definitely take that. Stappen takes a win as well, so congratulations to him. Wins at Monaco today. The most important thing for us is that we do finish seventh and we bring in points from Monaco. That's it then for another nail-biting Monaco Grand Prix. We were on the edge of our seats the whole time, but they've come through to take a stunning victory. So Anthony, what made the difference out there today? A reliable car, that was the most important factor here. This was a real battle of attrition, and you could tell those at the front were trying to find a balance between running their outright pace and taking care of the car to reach the end. Red Bull put up an outstanding fight for the position today and it's great to see it paid off for them. They do so much for the sport that you can't help but be delighted by today's race win.
So, let's review the driver's standings. Today's performance means Max Verstappen now owns the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Some amazing talent out on the track today, but Anthony, who would you pick as your driver of the day? I have to give it to the captain. They did a great job at getting the most out of their tyres without losing pace, something that's a very handy skill to have in modern-day Formula 1. It's time to check out the Constructors' standings. Red Bull pull further ahead in the standings. Meanwhile, Alfa Tori's strong weekend allows them to continue their march up the table. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. So congratulations to Verstappen, Bottas and Perez. One, two, three there. As you see there, we come from last, finish seventh. So I'm very happy with that. Looking at the fastest times though, we probably should have been 8th. But do we care? No. We're 7th. Of course, you've got all our D DNFs, including the fastest man on track, Lewis Hamilton. You got disqualified from being held, I would imagine. And um, has been got penalty as well. But looking at the driver's standings now, we move up to 11th. So I'm happy with that. We, are, we keep going up. Uh, constructors wise we are only one point away from Alpine and if you even look up as look higher up as well this is quite close amazing performance out there I'm sure you're pretty happy with that your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing honestly I'm really glad I live up to their expectations it looks like you've invested heavily in the development of new parts the improvements to the area department have been phenomenal so far it wasn't the cleanest race today, was it? None of us want to be the person to back down. These things happen at Monaco. Great. Well, that's everything. Here we are then, post-race. We gain that point back on Mick that he took from qualifying. Gives us that three-point lead back. I think it's 10-7. Acclaim, we nearly reached level four. Robert reached level six. And we reached team Acclaim level six. So four levels away, well, okay, three and a half levels away from Team Clan Level 10, which is the next sponsorship. We complete the sponsorship goal, we answer six questions and they only wanted two. We actually get the same amount of damage, even though Robert was out. It looked like he had a lot more damage than I did, but oh well. Nearly the team winning this, hopefully, yeah, we should make it some more upgrades next time. But anyway, that's all for the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Our second point finish in a row. So you know, I'll take him. Slow, slowly but surely you're getting points. And don't forget to like, like subscribe and just go server. And great for episode 4.